sweeping up dead ants every day, millions of ants inside their house, ants getting into the electrical equipment, and then the electric circuit shorts out. Just much, much worse. The script is familiar. An exotic ant invades, wreaking havoc. But these are not fire ants, and this is not a horror film. There is no word to describe them. Yet like the movies, native species battle for survival. There is public alarm. Stay in your home. And scientists race to combat the menace. This is one crazy ant. I tell you, gentlemen, science has agreed. The tawny crazy ant, native to South America, was first documented near Houston and in Florida in the early 2000s. Since then, it has invaded around the Gulf Coast. They're found in a variety of different habitats, urban, uh, suburban, and then also in natural environments. In Texas, we know that when you get an invasion of crazy ants, you lose lots and lots of insects, and you also lose all the ants, except for a few small species. Researchers, like Ed Lebrun, are concerned by the impacts of crazy ants on natural systems, even in the suburbs. Yeah, they are very active today. They cause a lot of damage to the native ecosystems by greatly reducing abundance and diversity of other insects in the system. And some natural places are especially fragile. This many ants in any environment will have negative consequences, typically. But there's uh, a lot of endangered species in these caves, right, Todd? Yeah. At the entrance of a protected cave on the outskirts of Austin, LeBron and natural resource specialist Todd Bayliss know swarms of crazy ants on the surface are bad news for rare cave bugs below. We got a call from Texas Cave Management Association to tell us that there was a major infestation of ants that they'd never seen before in their cave. And sure enough, found this tawny crazy ant in huge numbers inside the cave itself. That was a concern to us since this is one of the caves we hope to protect for some species of concern. We knew that they had the potential of being found in other endangered species caves nearby. Onward and inward. My name is Travis Clark. I'm a natural resources specialist for Travis County at the Balcones Canyonlands Preserve. The BCP was created to provide protections for eight endangered species. Six of those are karst invertebrates. We're at a cave in South Austin that's been impacted by tawny crazy ants. And the reason we're entering today is to do one of our quarterly karst faunal surveys to assess impacts by tawny crazy ants. There he is, right there. Right there. This is one of the species of concern that we're trying to protect. It's the species name is Rudini austinica. These species are essentially canaries in a coal mine. And so they're going to be indicative of cave health. And these cave systems are important because they're recharge features. People benefit through drinking water, through recreation, where this comes out in springs. Sicarina bandita. And that was two? One. OK. That's it. So essentially, what we're charged with is providing all the safeguards we can for these caves. The underground ecosystem is very unique, not just in North America, but all over the world. Knowing we had a problem, we looked for experts in the ant community that could possibly help us out. And we found Ed LeBron over at UT's Brackenridge Field Lab. This is the Invasive Species Research Group at the University of Texas at Austin. And we are uh, working on a lot of invasive species problems in the state of Texas. Most people in Texas, when you're talking about invasive ants, are thinking about red imported fire ants. They actually do less harm to the native Texas ecosystems than these crazy ants do. Crazy ants, so named for their erratic movements, eat or outcompete most of the spiders and insects around them, including the formidable fire ant. Fire ants are very tough. They have this extremely toxic venom. She actually goes up and literally takes the venom droplet off the end of the fire ant stinger. And crazy ants, they go, they fight, they get hit with fire ant venom, and they just keep fighting, they keep charging in, and they should all be dying. And so then here's the crazy ant detoxing from the venom. People, when you tell them they displace fire ants, like, yay. But the net effect is very negative. Insects are the base of the terrestrial food web. So if you knock out the base of the food web, those impacts then spread throughout the rest of the system, like birds and reptiles that feed directly on the insects, which plants proliferate and which plants don't. So you can really change the whole system by altering the arthropod community. 
Here's a trap. Such threats have biologists searching for ways to control crazy ants. Texas Parks and Wildlife contributed funding to an early investigation of boric acid bait stations in the field. Unfortunately, it's not very promising. We discovered that although the crazy ants loved the bait, brought the poison back to their nests, that it just didn't reduce the densities of the ants that we were hoping for. In the lab, there is now hope for a natural enemy that some crazy ants already carry. These are uninfected ants, so these were our control ants in that experiment. The microsporidian that we're working on is showing quite a bit of promise. A fungal parasite specific to these ants could help keep them in check. The development of larvae to workers is greatly reduced by infection, and the lifespan of workers is reduced by about a quarter. There's these phytoles and solenopsis, diploropterums, that are very tiny. And most of your ant diversity is down at this kind of size. So tiny crazy ants are just a very small component of the overall ant assemblage down in Argentina. The world of ants, Leaf -cutting ants is complex. We have here in Texas as well, we have added Texana. So further studies of ant interactions, where crazy ants are native and where they are not, may provide more ways to minimize their impacts. The subterranean nest where the beast spawns its terrible progeny. Meanwhile, we should remember that the very best solution to invasive species problems is to avoid creating them in the first place. Crazy ant queens don't fly. What that means is that they don't have a way to infest new areas except for people moving them. And that's unfortunately what's happening all over the state. So people move them when they take a potted plant somewhere that has ants in it. When you go to a, a garden store to buy something, it's important to look for ants. I mean, you don't have to be a, an ant biologist, just look for ants, and if they're covered in ants, don't buy it. Recreational vehicles are a problem as well. Being sure that there aren't any ants in your vehicle when you go visit a new place. Species invasion, it's a natural process, right? Species have been moving around the planet since there's been a planet. The problem is humans, with our commerce and everything we do, elevated the rate at which these invasions happen by many orders of magnitude. And so the natural system doesn't have time to adjust before the next invader comes. The natural systems are very resilient. If you can give them time to adjust, they will. We should be paying attention and we should be investing resources in offsetting the impact. That's why I work here. That's what we're about, is trying to change the dynamics so that we can preserve the natural systems that we all grew up with.